Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode of the Royal Family. In this episode we are starting Zayori's childhood story. It is not her main story, it's like a prequel to her main story. What we see in her childhood is going to shape her into who she will be in her main story. So I'm very excited for that. And then also in this episode we are going to be having Osiris's birthday party. He's aging up into a child which feels really really fast but it's time. And then we're also seeing a bunch of other royals and nobles who have aged up into children and we're going to see dynamics of the children we're going to see of course all the adults are invited this is a big birthday party with all the royals and the nobles i'll announce a few pregnancies so we'll see all that in the episode as well and then we're going to come back to the guangxi royal family and continue the story, story from there but we're going to get into all of that um also i figured i would kind of just give you guys a of what to expect with this series because I think now is a good like separating point between the two so like from Alice May's story to now and I've kind of answered some questions for on my stream and like in passing but I figured I would just make this all official now so some things to expect first of all season two is not going to be a hundred episodes it's not going to be as long as season one so essentially season three is going to be the start of Zayori's main story her childhood story really isn't going to be that long but it's still going to be like all in all, I think her childhood story is only going to be like maybe like four or five episodes or so. And then to, so as like the season starts coming to an end, we'll see the other worlds and some proposals. And then we're going to end with the big bang for a really big wedding for some of the royals, which I have a feeling y'all probably know which one. And then season three will be Larry's main story. Um, that will be the the beginning of the season. And then, of course, just like how we did with Alice May's story, we will see the other royals and uh, other situations going on with them. And our main couples might be having kids and we'll see them grow up, kind of like how we did with Alice May's story. We got to see like Zayori and all of them grow up. Um, but yeah, it's going to be a lot. There is going to be drama. This one's going to have action. There's going to be so much chaos so much tea, so much angst. We're gonna have rivalries. We're gonna have lust. We're going to have more action. We're going to, it's going to be a lot. I'm excited. We're in for a ride, but of course we're kind of setting, do, doing the prequel up before the big ride because I'm still recovering from Alice Bay's story. So yeah, let's go ahead and get started with this episode. Okay, so this is actually kind of amusing to me and I didn't plan it this way, but I, I literally just started the mini series. Oh gosh, oh, Zayori. Okay, we'll talk about that in a sec. We we literally just started the mini series with Alice May and Cedric for academic adventures. Alice May had her first day of school at university. Cedric had his first day of high school. And it just so happens that Zayori's starts at her going to elementary school for the first time, which I didn't actually realize it was gonna light up like that, but I think it's kind of funny. But I'm using the, the get to school mods to kind of help tell the story here. Zayori's in rage. She actually just got the emotion bomb quirk. This is literally happening like right after the machinima that you guys just saw. So like, sorry, like she has walked to class. We're in Newcrest, by the way, because I didn't know that Mount Komorebi didn't have any 30 by 40 lots, which I thought was a little ridiculous. Like it's got 250 by 50, but no 30 by 40. Oh, also as of now, there might be some more news by the time this episode comes up, but as of now, there's a leak that the next world, like the next expansion pack is going to have a Southeast Asian world. So, so before we, okay, so if that's the case, um, I just want to tell y'all what I'm planning to do. So because I have Southeast rep Southeast Asian representation in uh, Chinching, uh, which is what the world that Han is from, like Kanda, she's from Chinching, she is Thai, and then Gia is from Chinching, she's Filipino. So, or like that was the character's base of, obviously we don't have those countries in here, but that's what it's based off of. So because, also the uh, Asian Adventures mod that turns Chin Ching into like the Asian world that it is and not Forgotten Hollow. It's broken now. So I'm actually just gonna move Chin Ching to the new world. We'll make it work. That way they won't be in literally Forgotten Hollow and we'll have more lots. So I don't know, as of now, it, what is today? Today's, uh, I'm filming this on October 25th. I'm filming the first part on October 25th. So that's all the information I know right now. It said something about rental homes. I don't, honestly, not sure about the gameplay. I'll make my judgment when I actually see it, but I heard there's a Southeast Asian world. So I'm excited about that. And yeah, okay. Anyway, so. 
What was I saying? Oh yeah, okay, so Zyri's first day of school. It's an all girls school. Han and Araminta decided once the kids hit a certain age, they would attend this, it's, I mean, it's a pretty prestigious school. This mod, I will link it below, the get to school mod. I, I'm also linking the creator of the slot below as well. Yeah, so Zyori did not have a good interaction at the beginning of class. She's sitting alone. Also, I there, y'all, there is nothing I can do about the teacher, like their outfits and stuff. This lady's wearing something really random, but every time I tried to change it, it crashed. So uh, I'm, I'm going to avoid trying to change it. Zyori is so enraged. This is also, so she got the emotion bomb quirk. She also has this moodlet stressed with strangers from clingy childhood phase. Clingy sims don't like expanding their social circle beyond parents and caregivers. So I mean, honestly, the only interaction she's really ever had it, besides like being in front of the people of uh, Guangxi is like with royals and nobles and her family. This is, a, I mean, this is her first, first time faced with the reality, I guess. And these girls don't like her. Her, like, they, and and mostly, uh, okay, first of all, kids can be really mean. Hey, Sayori, what are you gonna do? Attend creative arts class. Okay, so she's going to her first class. She's pissed, she's so upset. She, she's just like, she's so, I don't know like how in race she, I think she's sad. Like, she's just like extremely hurt being called these things. She's now extremely self-conscious about her eye. It's all thanks to this one girl. So her her name is Fumiko. And like, I mean, granted, she definitely like heard some of this stuff probably from her parents. You know, her parents probably aren't that nice. And that's why she is the way she is too. Now she's just told everyone like, the princess is possessed. Like, don't go near her. If you look at her, she's going to do something to you. So the girls at this school are either mean to her or they're scared of her. So Zayori's not having a good first day at school. This is very different, I feel like, than Cedric and Alice May's first day of school. By the way, I'm also linking that video. That video was like the last video I posted, so if you want to watch it, go watch it. It's honestly, oh my god, it's going to be so much fun. It's going to be so much chaos. I'm so excited, but anyway. All right, so now now they're starting class. So Zayori, yeah, she had that mood lit. She has this mood lit, I'm a what, from being called something mean. How rude. Princess Zayori has never been called such an awful day before. This is literally perfect. Like, even if... People have said this about her, like she's never heard it before. Zyori's young, this is literally like, now, nah, nah, she's having a horrible time at school. This is not fun for her. So they're in class, oh, there's literally, is there no teacher? Oh. So it is like Zyori attending school before her sisters, Han and Araminta essentially decided an age that they want their kids to go to school. And Zyori has hit that age. So then because the girls are all a year apart, Rin would go next year and then Mimi would go the following year. Right now she has a neutral confidence. Sims with neutral confidence are still figuring out how they feel about their own capabilities. They can easily be easily encouraged or discouraged when gaining or losing confidence. A Sim with neutral confidence will have neither high nor low self-esteem when aging into a teen. A child Sim's confidence level can increase or decrease depending on the skill gain. School performance, positive or negative socialization, succeeding or failing, skill-based activities, confident or embarrassed moods, and more. Caregivers criticizing or praising a child's behavior also impacts their confidence levels. Oh my gosh! Also clingy, which I think is funny because didn't she used to have the independent tree? Honestly, I feel like it's like a... I, I really don't think she's that clingy. I think she did go into this pretty confident, but after what happened and like now that she's being shunned by all her, her peers, now she's just like, I just want to be home. I miss my family. I miss my sisters. I miss my friends. I want to go home. I don't want to interact with any more strangers because now they all think this of me. Also, I swear she used to have a high confidence, so I think this did bring her confidence down. And little Miss Fumiko here, she is a mean sim. Mean sims delight in being nasty to others, so she's literally feeling great. But she's a festering bitterness about someone here, but I think it's Zayori. Make an enemy from being mean. Mean. I don't know if she would announce Zayori as her enemy unless Zayori fought back. But right now I think Zayori doesn't know what to do. She's too present. This is the first time this has happened to her. I, I don't think she knows what to do. Also, she still has this become enemies with Lady Jessica. I'm good. Can I re-roll for it? She's had that for literally ever. I think she's over it. Make a friend! <gasps> Y'all, that's so- she just wants to make a friend at school, but no one will talk to her! Ay, that's so sad! What the heck? Go swimming! Okay, that's not as- okay. Okay, so it's now lunchtime. Why aren't you eating in the cafeteria, children? Hello? They're literally- there's tables-
table's here for you. Why would you leave? Call Princess Iori a warm kisser. That's very specific. Call Princess, claim Princess Iori is a plantsim. Claim Princess Iori is an alien. I feel like, I mean, I feel like that's essentially what she's calling her is like, she's different. Like there's some, like she's possessed essentially. I feel like that's close enough. Which is essentially what she already called. Is she literally gonna sit down and tell this to her face? That's so sad! What are her moodlets claim to be a flop? From claiming a sim is something they aren't. Oh, wait, what? Did they not understand the insult? Why are they not upset? You know what? She's probably trying to get a reaction out of Zayori and Zayori's not reacting. She's like, okay, well fine. I'll have to come up with something new. Like she's trying. I believe in me from confidence game. You little. Mm. Okay, so, I mean, still, it's not going well. The other girls are, like, literally have co- Where are they? Is it because Zayori's not here and no one wanted to sit near her? Why are they here? This is literally, like, the library. Okay, well, we get the picture. I, I don't think we need to go through the full day at school here. Again, to summarize, she's had a horrible first day at school. Okay, so we are now back at the Guangxi Palace. Sayori has returned home from school. Okay, so she's feeling enraged. She's going to try to calm down. Han and Aramint. Uh, oh, they're talking in here together. They're flirting with each other. Aramint is feeling inspired. Han's feeling flirty. Okay, so Sayori has come home, but she's trying to calm down. Maybe they hear her and Aramint and Han hear her. And um, they, there's always birds. Well, that was uncalled for. Princess Rin acting maliciously towards Princess Mamie really left a sour taste in her mouth. Is Princess Mamie wishing Sims could just be nice to each other instead of whatever that was? After reflecting on this rude interaction, could it be that Princess Mamie dislikes malicious interactions? I mean, like, yeah, but to her. Like, I can see Mamie also being malicious, but like, so would I say yes or no? I mean, she doesn't like them to her. Okay, I'm gonna say no because I think she would do malicious interaction. What is going on over here, girls? Are y'all fine? Fighting, tense, Rin is tense. Oh, also, wait, the same thing. How are we even a family from difficult family dynamic? Uh, Princess Rin struggles to comprehend how she can re be related to some of her family members. Family can be so difficult sometimes. Oh my gosh. Okay, well, they're fine. That's nothing new. They're arguing. All right, so on and air, Vinta, here's Iori. They're, they're like, oh my gosh, she's home. Honey, how was your first day at school? And oh, she's doing push-ups. Okay. Sayori, I feel like is oh, we didn't click that. Sayori's gonna stomp up to her room. They're like, honey, how was your first day at school? And Zayori, wait, 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 wait. I need to paint the picture. <laughs> okay. Hun and are meant to go. Honey, how was your first day at school? And Zayori stomps through. <laughs> and they're like, uh. Maybe we should check on that. Sayori's going upstairs. She's stopping upstairs. She's, oh, she's going through a wall. She's going through another wall. Those doors don't work. Can she like angrily? I guess that's only like they cry if they're sad. I think she would, maybe, I think she would try not to cry. I think she's trying not to cry. She's like, okay, she's hurt. That was awful. But like her, her, you know, some people respond by being angry. Some people respond by being sad. I think Zayori's first instinct kind of is like anger. But she's, she, she, maybe like a tear would fall. You know, like just a singular, oh, Han came in here without me asking to check on her. Han, oh my gosh. Han be a dad. He's trying to calm her down. He's asking her what happened. Zayori's still a little bit enraged. Denounce friendship, no, 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 no. Han, Han, just make her feel, no, Han. Oh, now he's trying to diffuse the situation between Rin and maybe. <laughs> Express love. Okay, Han is like, she, I imagine her like in bed, like under the covers. Oh, is that what she's literally about to do? No, no, no. She's going to the bathroom sink to wash her hands. Okay, can you hide? Emotion bomb! Sayori just got the emotion bomb quirk. Now you have it too, okay. What can angry Sims do? I imagine honestly her hiding under the covers. Maybe she locks herself in her room at first. And then that's when Han's like, hey, you wanna talk about it? She's like, no, I hate school. Oh, Han literally did come back in here. Oh, is that because I told him to? Okay. Okay, he was trying to make her, oh no. Oh, okay, this is her venting. This is her venting about school. Oh, it's done. Promise to help. <gasps> Stop. He's like, tell me about it. What happened? I can like, let me try to help. Like what, what happened at school that made you so upset? Oh my God, okay, Zyori's like, they hate me. Like all the girls hate me. If they don't hate me, they're scared of me. Like, oh, he's like, breathe, just breathe. Like, tell me about it. Oh my gosh. Oh my god, oh wait, did she not like that? Oh, 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 she's enraged. Oh no, oh my god, all the girls are enraged. I'm trying to tell a story here. Oh, they're 
gonna be interesting. Okay, uh, everyone's enraged. Uh, everyone's having issues right now. Relax, she's trying to go relax. Okay, so she's telling Han about it. Uh, Aramita, why don't you come here too? You you should also be here for this. Maybe Han was like, let me try to talk to her first. But Aramita's like, no, 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 I'm, co I'm coming with you to talk to her. She's my daughter too. They're going through walls again. Aramita, wait, no, don't walk away from your mother. Try to cheer a family member. Oh, oh, perfect. Wait, what was that? Why are you angry now? Witness inappropriate behavior. Okay, respect your mother, respect your mother. <laughs> oh, wait, this is so sweet. She's trying to make her feel better. Oh my gosh, oh my gosh. Oh my God, I love this. Ask about school. Oh, I don't know how well that's gonna go. Oh, 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 yeah, okay, she's like, okay, this is her saying again. They all hate me, they all hate me. Oh, 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 Aramita, oh my God, stop, that's so cute. I keep getting distracted by all these really cute interactions. Offended from Petty Jab. Sayori, did you Petty Jab your mother? Uh, just call me Petty Pancakes! No! <laughs> oh my god. What if? Called out for being confronted by a loyal sim. Oh my god. Okay, okay. Here's what I am. Okay, so here's what just happened. Okay, first of all, Zyaria is under a lot of pressure. Aramita is like, people think she's like perfect. Like, she's so good at everything. She's such a good empress. She's so graceful. She's so elegant. She's sweet, but she's also like, can put her foot down when she needs to. She's care. She's just like, renowned. And Zayori has to follow that. So, I think Zayori, as she's grown up, is starting to feel a bit, what's the, I don't know, I don't wanna say like inferior to her mother, but she's she's realizing how much she has to live up. And this is what she has to follow whenever the day comes as she becomes empress. So, Araminda like asked what was wrong. She was like trying to comfort her. Zayori was pretty pissed. And she was like, Aramid is like, okay, well, like, calm down, like, tell me what happened. And she's like, don't tell me to calm down. You wouldn't know. People aren't like this to you. You don't have to deal with, oh no, now the, wait, they're yelling. I didn't even say anything. Difficult. Do I say yes? Uh, no, no. I don't. I think it's difficult, but like not in the sense that they think it's difficult, you know? Like I want something slightly in between. I don't know, maybe this is making Sayori angsty. Okay, anyway, to finish my sentence, she was like, like you like you wouldn't know, you wouldn't have to deal with this. So maybe that was her petty jab. And Aramid is like, hold on, <laughs> excuse you. I am trying to help you. Like, what? <laughs> do I say difficult? Y'all, I wish I was streaming right now so y'all could tell me yes or no. Okay, I'm going to say yes. Let me know in the comments if you think I should keep it because I think things are complicated a little bit just because of like the feelings of like what Zyra has to live up to and all this stuff. But I mean, like we also said that Leilana and Kaleo had a difficult dynamic and theirs isn't even close to that difficultness, you know? Like Aramid is way more caring, is will like she wants to be there for her kids. She's kind, she's, I think, pretty fair, can be strict, like respect, but I think that's just a cultural thing too, is like respect is very important. And then Zayori's going through all this angsty stuff, especially now that she's had to deal with it at school. Okay, I'm gonna say yes, but knowing all that, let me know in the comments what you guys think. Let me know and back it up. If you, if you need some reasoning too, back it up. And maybe things will change as time goes on. We'll have to see, but this is wild to, I, I don't, uh, I don't think it's to the level of a difficult family dynamic, but I'll, I'll just say yes for now. Okay, express love. We're going to have her express love. Praise effort in social growth. Okay, she's like, I know this was so hard for you, but like you did it, you like went, you tried. She's trying to comfort her. She doesn't want her daughter to have to deal with this. I mean like Araminta was bullied by her older sister, or not older. Araminta was bullied, well, but like to a serious extent by Anya growing up, which I don't think Zyari knows fully about. Like she doesn't know the details. She knows that her aunt's kind of like on a hush-hush sort of thing, but she's feeling better now. Also, Rin and Mamie, maybe they come in here to make Zyari feel better too. So Zyari, I think after all this, she's like, I don't want to go back to school. That was horrible. I don't want to go back. And I think Han and Araminta are kind of like looking at each other and they're like, we'll talk about it. And she's like, don't make me go back. So Han and Araminta, I think they'll talk about it too, but they're like, Okay, like they don't, they don't want her to be miserable. They don't want her to go through that. They don't want her to have to do with these like awful, like these kids being so awful to her. And she's like 
feeling so she she was so upset. I was gonna have May. Oh my god, what are you girls doing? Mamie, please. Oh my goodness, Rin. I was going to have Mamie and Rin make Zayori feel better, but Zayori's feeling better, and Mamie and Rin are angry from the fight they had with each other. <laughs> but they they have a I I think I just think Rin and Mamie are very and we talked about this last episode, last Royal Family episode, but I think Rin and Mamie are very different. Like they're the most different. But yeah, okay, we're we're actually gonna we're, we're gonna go to Ty Osiris's birthday party first and see all that. Uh, have a lot of fun and a lot of chaoticness, and then um, we'll come back and see the royal family of Guangxi and the royal family of Chinching. Okay, so we are now at Osiris's birthday party. Don't question where we're at. I had some issues in Selva Dorada, so this is a makeshift. I, I put the ballroom here in Dakarai, so this is kind of makeshift. Just ignore it. Just, just pretend it's, it's, it is what it is. We'll kind of talk through everything too. I'll show you everyone who is here, but for, I actually just want to start with Osiris aging up because a lot of what I want to do involves him being aged up. Also, we just had our Halloween stream, so um, I, I tried to make it so some of them wouldn't show up in their Halloween costumes. I thought I had changed it. Also, Mamie's eating off of a plate of nothing. Okay, there we go. Osiris is blowing out the candles. He's becoming a child. He's so cute. It looks like some of the people are not in the outfit. Wow. Oh my gosh, the power went out. Is this a sign? Hold on. Pay bills. Okay, they're gonna, they're gonna pay their bills. Active dog lover and all art lover. I just randomized it. I feel like we're going to have to play like and, and see more of Osiris before um it, it is officially decided. I can see him honestly being a bit of a goofball. Um aspiration. I'll do social for now. That's fine. Okay, we have the power back on. The bills have been paid. Rin is in a pirate costume. So this is Os oh maybe he's upset. Uh this is Osiris. He's so precious! He, oh no, wait, come back. We have to look, wait, 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 wait. Oh my gosh, Sissy's mad. I'm about to check that out in a second. Okay, this is Osiris. He's now a kid, which is wild to me. But I just wanted to, I wanted to do this party with him as a child. So obviously this is his birthday party. Sis is Sissy. Ar argue with Zachary. Okay, so they've been in a situation ship for a while now. Argue about relationship. Have the what are we talk? Okay, hold on. Argue about relationship, and then I want to have the what are we talk. So they've been in a situation ship for a very long time now. I feel like a lot of it is just they're both pretty busy and they both live kind of far away from each other. Maybe Sissy just isn't. I don't want to say satisfied, but like maybe Zachary's not. Like he's just not talking to her as much anymore. Let's see. Let Let's see what they say. Maybe that will help. I well I am. Dating other people, but you're my favorite? Okay, um, I don't think Sissy's gonna settle for that. I, I feel like, like even if they're not exclusive, she'd be like, okay. <laughs> I don't know, I feel like it's hard unless you have the conversation about being exclusive, but I feel like maybe they were under the impression, maybe they have talked about being exclusive or it's been hinted at, but if it's not clear, I feel like it, oh my gosh, okay, well he just gave her the hand. I just got out of something pretty serious, so I wanted to take things slow. What? With whom? I think they're gonna break up. <laughs> I think, uh, maybe this whole conversation is making Sissy realize like, Maybe I don't like him that much. Maybe this isn't worth my time. Ask to just be friends. Sissy's like, okay, well, you know, if you want to take things, you may, maybe that's it. Maybe since he's like, well, I want to take things slow, but Sissy's kind of ready for a relationship. So she's like, well, I don't think I can do that. And it doesn't seem like things are working out super, super well with us. So maybe we should just be friends. I, it's a pretty mutual agreement. Zach, okay, Princess Sissy and Lord Zachary have decided to cool off their romantic relationship. Okay, yeah. Oh, also, okay, her belly's not showing. Hold up. Okay, now, pregnancy announcement. Kimmy is pregnant. Um, she's having another baby, probably next episode. Juliet is also pregnant and will also have a baby in the next episode. However, I, we invited her. I don't see her yet, though. She'll probably show up in a bit. Oh my gosh, Liam did show up. I didn't actually expect him to show up. Okay, also, other thing. So, T, so we recently, as I mentioned, had our Halloween stream. I try not to do too much like dire story stuff on there, especially with main characters. I'll talk about Liam and Ember in a sec. Why don't I talk about the kiddos first? Okay, so I just started a kids club, mostly with the kids I don't see here yet because this kids group is is getting to be a lot. We're gonna have a lot more uh, come into the stage. So after Osiris, 
the ones aging up pretty soon is going to be Priya, Pilapo, and Sione. They're all gonna be part of this group. There's a few others too that we will see in this stream. So we have kind of like a few of the shy boys because we were thinking like who would be the boys group, like who would be friends. So we have Kaiko is a little bit, more, oh whoops, Kaiko is a little bit more on like the loner side. He's a bit angsty, actually a lot angsty, um, but Kaiko and then Vincent is a bit more on the shy side too. Vin oh my gosh, he's although very angry right now. Um, so Kaikoa and Vincent, so Makai's son, Diana's son. Felix is also part of this, like, of like the quieter boys group. We'll see how well they get along with the more outgoing ones. What are Jabari, are you just doing? Oh my gosh, y'all, Jabari's doing push-ups right next to Makai. Why is that so funny? He's, 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 wait, this is so funny. I don't, every time Jabari does something like this, I don't think he's doing this, but I love to imagine Jabari being like, I got the girl, I got my wife Amira, and you didn't, look at me, I can do push ups <laughs> Jeff's just looking at Jabari like, what are you doing? <laughs> Moses is here, Osiris are talking. Such a cute aunt and nephew pair. Okay, Nohei is here, I think we need to change his outfit. Oh wait, oh no, I do, okay, I need to introduce you to the noble family of Dakarai. There's a huge mess out here, oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Okay, and also Lady Catalina, but Lady Lena from the Halloween stream, she, her and Cambridge don't like each other. I believe I have mentioned that before, especially during our like winter holiday episode. Gradually, oh, congratulations on his birthday. She's like, happy birthday. So she doesn't have a good relationship with Cambridge. They don't like each other. However, she's pretty good friends with Colette. We can like definitely see them being besties. We can also see, so this is Lady Deo. She is the daughter of the Count and Count Consort of Dakarai, who I want you guys to meet here. We've met Deo's older siblings, McKenna and Itaro. They were in the miniseries. They're in Cedric's grade. They're in, they go to high school with him. And then their parents, which I don't see here, so I want you guys to meet them too. So Catalina definitely gives off Mean Girl vibe. She very much loves her friends. So Deo and Colette, we can see them being like a little trio. Maybe their clique will grow. We will have to see. I I can see Osiris being that kid that all the other kids have a crush on. Like a lot of them have a crush on. So I can see Catalina having a huge, oh look at them hug, they're so cute. Um, I can see Catalina having a crush on him. So her and Osiris, they're, they're, they're growing. Like the relationship is growing quite a bit. However, Felix, he started talking to Catalina as well, but his twin sister Cambridge doesn't like Catalina, but Felix doesn't mind her. So we're gonna see if that's gonna grow to become a problem. And then who, the other people that we have here. So Alice May, she is at university right now, but she flew in for the night because she's like, I'm not missing my cousin's birthday party. So she's just here. Cedric's here, of course. We saw Cedric. Um, and then Caspian is still at college. He couldn't make it. He has a lot of homework to do. I feel like Alice May probably tried to get a lot done. William had a lot of homework to do as well. I think Alice May was the only one who's like, no, I'm flying in for my cousin's birthday. Okay, so time to meet the nobles of Dakarai. So we've already met McKenna. This is Lady McKenna. She was in the mini series um, in Cedric's class, so she's a teenager. And then this is Countess Inola, so she's the title holder. Holder, sorry. Um, and then McKenna's twin brother over here. This is Itaro. We have also met him. Where'd he go? Where did he go? Okay, so this is Lord Itaro. We also met him in the. <gasps> Oh, and he's flirting with Sissy. <laughs> so let's look at his twin brother. Uh, oh no, his eyelashes are messed up. I'm gonna have to fix that too, but he was in the mini series. Apparently he, he's got a little crunch. Is he flirt? He's feeling flirty. Uh, so the Taro, and then we saw Deo. This is their youngest sister. Why are they, oh, oh, wait. Why are so many of y'all sad? Not the favorite from declared favorite, but wait, what, what, who, wait. Oh no. What is happening? Okay, well, um, stuff is going on. Also, some Mary is here. Bellatrix should be here too. And then we saw Nohea and Lady Oshi Ann should also be here. Bellatrix and Mary, they're still taking time away from their family. Pretty much no one except for Kimmy and Makana are here from the Solani family. And obviously, like, besides the kids and Makai. But, uh, Leilana's not here. Dean's not here. Um, so they thought it was safe. Ava didn't come here either. She knows that Bellatrix doesn't really want to see her right now. Um, she's tried calling, but 
it hasn't been working very well. So yeah, there, there, there's all that going on. Also, I haven't seen Sayori. Maybe she's just going through it and didn't want to come. And then MM, you look. And then Sephora too. And, okay, so MM and Osa I think she's got a supportive dynamic with both Samora and Desta. And then Desta and Osiris also have a supportive dynamic as well. Look at her, y'all. She is so freaking cute. She's adorable. Hey, also, Sissy and... Sissy and Itaro. I'm wondering if this should be a thing. I mean, she just, her and Zachary just ended it. They weren't that serious to be fair though. So I think I said this in the mini series, but um, let me see, can you exchange numbers? Yeah. I didn't have Sissy go to the school because I feel like she, it, it's far, she'd have to stay there. And I really feel like she wants to spend as much time with Zamora. Zamora is an elder and she has been for a while. However, for like her life, like it looks like she still has some time left, but you know, you know, never know um and i think sissy just really wants to spend time with samora so also she's the fear of death which i feel like doesn't help also i was thinking of doing a story po post with this when i i had the idea but then i like i stopped doing a story post so I, I never got to so izara died it was honestly at this point it might have been a couple years but like in game i guess like a year ago so i i, I wanted to like uh, just talk about that because i so this was kind of the scene i had in mind for for it. So Azara dies. Zamora hears about it. Azara, you know, she she was a huge partier. She took a lot of things and drank a lot and, and did a lot of drugs. So I imagine it might have been an overdose for her. So Zamora heard about it. And Sissy knows who her birth mom is. They've like told her about her. Sissy's never, I, I don't know if I've discussed this. I think I have, but like Sissy's very well aware that Azara basically traded her for money essentially and for like a rich life. So Sissy has never had any interest in meeting Azara. She doesn't think of her in a high regard at all. So I imagine Zamora told her that Azara had passed away while Sissy was probably just like doing homework in a room or something and Sissy was just kind of like, okay. And Zamora's like, do you, do you want to talk about it? And Sissy's like, I mean, I guess what happened? And, and Zamora tells her and Sissy's like, okay, well, th I mean, that makes sense considering everything that y'all have told me about Azara. So, but then I, I wanted to, like Zamora to be like, okay, um, I'll leave you to it then. And then Zamora leaves and then Sissy's like, wait. And then she's like, I love you, mom. And like hugs her and like that. Was, and like that was the scene that I had in mind. And I just, I really love Sissy and Zamora's relationship. I think Zamora, she's literally a queen, but also like figuratively queen. She's just amazing. and does what she needs to do, but is also very, very caring. So yeah, I wanted to I wanted to mention that because I think I saw a comment where I forgot to mention it and that we saw Azara's ghost in an episode or something. And they were like, wait, Azara died? I was like, oh yeah, <laughs> love that. I forgot to mention that. So anyway, okay, so now it's, oh, okay. I don't want things to go too fast. I'm gonna, but like, then again, I'm like, wait, whoa, I wanna see them at some point. Um, You know what? That is something we might be able to do in the miniseries. So Sissy isn't going to school again. She like wants to stay here. She'd be, she's one of the ones being homeschooled. We will see her later though, like when she's a young adult. Before we go though, I do wanna end on this note. So also in the Halloween stream, Ember was flirting with Liam's friend. They're not that close and they haven't known each other for very long. They just like get along really well. Like they have similar personalities. They're both F boys. Uh, this is but Ember and Bandit, which is Candace's ex, was flirting in, at the wedding in the last episode. So during the stream, Ember and Bandit, they had their first kiss. We tried to do this away from the kids because it was a Halloween party for the kids. So then they left and did their own thing. They left and they went to go woohoo in the onsen. <laughs> but like, I feel like Liam definitely has not been faithful. I, they just got married, y'all. Like they have not been married for very long. <laughs> but Liam is also not faithful. But I wonder if Ember would tell Liam about it here. Um, so Chief of Fidelity confessed having cheated with, oh my gosh, would she tell him that it's Mehmet? Would he care? I guess we'll find out. We'll find out, we'll find out. Okay, all right, tell him. Ember, tell him. All right, she's telling him. Also, I with this outfit, she looks like Molly Grace. I need to change her outfit. Okay, she's telling Liam. Oh, he is bad. Oh, he is bad. Well, I mean, probably because it was bad. It. And also, he's like, okay, well, do other people know about this? Like, also, hello, you're telling me this in public. People can hear. No, I was right there. Liam and Margie's. Um, oh, <gasps> Liam's brother just confessed having woohooed with another. What should Liam do? It's too painful and hopeless. Just break up with him. So he can't break up with her. <laughs> Give the relationship and his partner and chance, but Liam and Ember now just 
Why is he chat? Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, look at her. She's like not, she's not sorry. We've been, oh, it's 7 a.m. Oh my gosh, they need to start going to classes and stuff soon, so we're gonna have to end this. Um, oh, I didn't know if there was like a makeup woohoo. I, well, I guess I can't really do that here. Oh, speaking of, oh wait, we have to end this. Hold on, hold on. Okay, wait, before we go. Okay, Best and Adrian are trying for a baby. I want them to have another. Oh my God, well, okay, cool. All right, they're trying for a baby. Oh my gosh, she's doing sit-ups after the woohoo. That's hilarious. Okay, Des is taking a pregnancy test. Oh, is it? Is Oh my gosh, is she pregnant? Yes! Okay, that was way easier than some of the others were. <laughs> Yay, okay, Ness and Adrian are having a baby. Not in the next episode, but the one after that. Okay, but now we are going to go see the Guangxi and Qingxing royal family. All right, so we are now back at the Guangxi Palace. We're having Han's family over for dinner, so it's Han's father, Emperor Li Wei, who's standing in the corner for some reason and not facing anybody. And it is his older brother Akio and Akio's family, his older sister, his older sister Tai, and Tai's family. They're just having their little family dinner. Also, okay, so now that I'm filming this, so the first part I filmed before the teaser trailer for the new pack came out. Now it's November fourth. The teaser trailer for the expansion pack came out, and it it is in fact a Southeast Asian world and a world inspired by Thailand and it looks so beautiful and that is what I am most excited for in the pact. I don't know how much else. Honestly, landlords since like a lot of royals and nobles, like they own land and literally like have tenants and stuff. So maybe I can find a way to turn it into something like that, but not like apartments necessarily like it is. So that's actually confirmed. So everything I said at the beginning is still true, but yeah, I'm excited for that. Okay, so I have since decorated this little room. This is more for smaller dinner parties and like having dinner with the family and stuff. I think I, I really need to finish the palace because I said I would do it by Zayori's story. Now I will have it done before Zayori's main story. How about that? I will be working on that. I was kind of thinking, so I made some changes in this room too. I'm still working on it a bit. I was kind of thinking of like setting up a banquet area here. I'm not 100% sure yet, but like a big one for when they have like the really great Grand parties, but again, they're having a dinner here. Wow, Zayori's really close with her grandpa. I didn't know that. I mean, I know Zayori's close with her uncle. Yeah, she's still close with her uncle. She's close to her cousin. They're all still pretty close. Um, and then, of course, now that we have the dynamics of relationships, so Han and his dad have the uh, the distance dynamic. Sims with a distant family dynamic tend to be more reserved when around each other and won't make particularly frequent contact contact when apart. Even when in the same household, they won't go out of their way to interact or spend time together. If they do speak, they're both naturally lean towards small talk. Oh my gosh, this is perfect. They also have higher chance of forming bitter sentiments. And then Akio and, and Han, they have a difficult dynamic. And then I'm pretty sure Akio and Tai have, they're, they're close. Oh, okay, so they don't have a dynamic yet, but they, they're close. I'll make sure to change that, or maybe it'll appear tonight. So for those who don't remember or don't know, actually, I'm gonna have y'all interact a bit too. Can you, can you actually make small talk with your dad? Oh, you're trying to flirt with her, Amanda, please don't do that as like a group conversation because I don't know how well that's going to go. Friendly small talk, small talk. Get to know, ask about, how, how's, ask about career. How is being an emperor? <laughs> okay, so real quick recap of Han's family background for those who don't remember or those who don't know. Okay, this is like a speed run through, but I, I mean, this was all in early, season two before before halfway through because the halfway through was Han and Aramis's wedding but close to it oh no please okay who are you, who are you fighting with who are you fighting with no no arguing not yet not yet oh, oh no are you arguing with your son oh, oh wait you're not close to your nephew okay let's change that thanks for coming oh dear please get to know your nephew stop arguing so Han his mother died when Han was born from complications of birth and his dad Li Wei the emperor here just went to a complete state of depression after his wife had died it was very very distant from his children, didn't know how to talk to them. When he looked at Han, it was kind of a reminder of what happened to his wife. So Han growing up was just like, his dad would barely talk to him. And then his brother, Akio, who was seven at the time, and his older sister, Tai, was five at the time of their mother's death. But Akio was very close with their mother and took her death so hard. And he was very young, didn't know how to process emotions. He took it out completely on Han. It called him a monster, like all this stuff, without anyone to tell him like what he was doing is wrong and that is not Han's fault. And then can't treat people like that. That kind of carried into adulthood the way he treated Han. And then his sister Tai didn't blame Han. She kind of took it upon herself to be like a mother figure. She was very nurturing to Han, but she also couldn't really stand up for Han. So then when Han met Araminta, things 
pretty much changed because Araminta saw the way that Han's family treated him and she said something. She stood up for him. She was like, you can't treat him like that. Like, this is not his fault. What are you doing? What is wrong with you? And that was just a complete wake up call for Li Wei and Akio. And as you guys see, their relationship with Akio and Han is difficult still and Li Wei and Han is distant. So there's still tension, especially between Han and Akio. Li Wei is trying. I think he's just a reserved person in general and very quiet, but he, and he's a loader too, but he's trying and especially trying with his, with Li Wei's grandkids. So yeah, that's the background, just a little refresher. All right, so it looks like the, they're pretty much wrapping up dinner. It looks like they're getting some dessert right now. I'm going to have the kids, why don't you go polite? Not a lot of the rooms are quite done yet. So why don't you go turn on dance? I'm gonna have the kids, oh, look at Ty with her nephew Kaito. Okay, I'm gonna have the kids go, should uh, Emperor Li Wei? Yeah, why, why didn't Emperor Li Wei go too? Spend some time with your grand, oh my God. Okay, I need to fix their relationship. He's not that close with Ty either. We'll change that. I think they're decent. Close. Like, Dai is just such a great aunt. Azumi is here. Azumi is uh, Akio's wife. We have Admiral Zhang, so Zhang is Tai's husband. Okay, Yuzuru, why don't you go with the kids too? And then Emperor Liwei, you can go over here. By the way, just curious, has anyone read Daughter of the Moon Goddess? Because there's a, the prince's name is Liwei in there. And I was like, oh my god, um, dance. Okay, I, I just thought that was so cool. Also, it is an amazing book. Liwei, are you doing sit-ups you're trying to stay in shape uh, yeah but it's it's based off chinese mythology but it's like a modern twist of chinese mythology i guess but it doesn't take place in like modern times like there's immortals and goddesses and gods and all that stuff oh shen you shouldn't be here shen go hang out I, you're a teenager but go hang out with the kids he doesn't go to high school because it's for the alliance and chinching isn't technically part of the alliance of the seven kingdoms oh my gosh they're leaving wait come back i'm trying to do a scene okay i guess han and Ermita probably should be sitting at the head of the table that's fine the sims are gonna do whatever they want do. Okay, so now Han and Araminta are telling just the family, like filling them in about Sayori and what happened at school. So let, why don't y'all, why don't y'all just chat a bit. They're talking about their kids, they're catching up, talking about things with the family. Okay, so they're telling what happened with Sayori and like her horrible dance school and how the kids treated her and that she wanted to drop out and that they're letting her. And I feel like Akio is like, what? Like, why? And they're just like, what? What do you mean, why? We just told you why. Did you hear what happened? Did you not hear that? And Akio is like, I'm gonna have him give parenting tips. These are kind of uncalled for. Interest, give parenting tips. Okay, so I feel like Akio is like, what do you, like, why are you just letting her drop out? Like, she she needs to learn to stand up for herself. And Aramis and Han are like, uh, <laughs> they're like, she, she was in so much distress. So she's still gonna be schooled here. Like, we're, we're going to, she'll have her own tutors and be taught at the palace. And Akio's like, that's not the point. You need to, she needs to learn to stand up for herself. Like, you shouldn't have just let her drop out. And I feel like Han and Aramis, especially Han, is like, like, I just feel like Akio's going on about this and Han is just like, like stop telling me to how to parent my child. I'm gonna have him do, let's see, mean arguments, argue, argue about parenting. Okay, yeah, he's just like, stop telling me how to parent my child. This is not your business. She is not your daughter. I'm her dad. We're we're doing what we think is best for her. And if she wanted to drop out, then she can drop out. Oh, so I, <laughs> I think I mentioned this. Like I've, I've mentioned how all the Jinjin kids, so Han and Tai and Akio, like they grew up learning martial arts and Han, since they were little, has been teaching the girls martial arts. Um, and he's just like, wait, she can, like, she can kick someone's butt. Like, it's not like she's just, you know, so quiet and stuff like, and Akio's just like, this is different. Also, you are too soft on her. I've seen you teach the girls. Like, you're too soft on them. Martial arts, you're supposed to teach them discipline. They're supposed to learn, like, life lessons, not just fighting. And I feel like at this point, Han is just like, okay, stop. I mean, there is some tension between them anyway. Get off my property. Mean arguments. Yeah, like, okay, yeah. I would have him yell at He's just like, stop. I feel like Han is just so, like, obviously him and, oh my gosh, look at a cute. He's seething. Oh my gosh. Okay. Where, also, where is Admiral Jog? I don't know where he is, but I, I feel like things are now just very tense. I mean, they're fighting in front of their spouses and their sister and stuff. And I feel like Araminda wants to say something too, but she's kind of like, oh, Han? Han's standing up for that. Like, obviously she's there to back him up, but Han's the one going off on his brother and Araminda's like, this is really good for him. And like, like, you obviously shouldn't be getting in their business. You, I don't think personally should tell someone how to parent their children. 
But for a Kyo too, I feel like a lot of it is, I mean, this goes real deep. I mean, with the way he treated Han and everything, and he's, I think, very sorry for how he treated Han, but he doesn't know how to express that they're not one to talk about their feelings. He's not gonna tell Han that. But, oh, no, every, oh, okay. Well, his wife just left. Uh, I feel like maybe Azumi was like, you need to stop. <laughs> You need to stop right now and try to hold it back, but Akio is like just still going off. But now he's seeing his niece that this is happening to her and that people are being mean to her and bullying her, and he wants her to stand up for herself. He doesn't want it to be like the way it went with Han, where Han just kept completely quiet the whole time. He didn't say anything. He didn't stand up for himself, even though Akio was the one, essentially like his tormentor. So it's it's complicated. Han is just very angry, and I think rightfully so. I kind. I mean, like, there, okay, well, Zayori is just out here. I don't jog him out here to hang out with the kids. It's really cute. But I, I kind of wonder if Zayori can hear this. Why don't you go back here? So I, yeah, Zyra can hear this and she, so she's hearing like what her uncle is saying, what Akio is saying, that like she needs to learn to hand, stand up for herself. Or Akio is saying to Han, you should let me teach Zayori. I won't be soft on her, but I will be fair. And Han is just like, you are stepping so over the line right now. Like this is, this is not okay. But yeah, so I, I, I mean like, you know, the general of the conversation. I'm gonna have it in a machinima in the next episode as well. Do you think we're gonna end this here? Cause we are going to continue this in the next episode. All right, so I know this episode was a bit shorter than the others, but the last two episodes have been like an, over an hour and this one's still pretty long, so I think that's okay. But let me know your guys' thoughts on everything. We definitely learned a lot with Zayori and her family and we have some dynamic stuff going on. Definitely let me know if you think we should keep the difficult dynamics between Araminta and Zayori. I got to see Osiris age up and a bunch of the kids who have aged up as well, which is so, so wild. I can't believe they're going up. If you enjoyed this episode, make sure you hit that like button and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.